Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. I'm Cassidy Cash and this week we're going to be taking a look at hourglasses. Hourglasses were very popular on board ships, but they were also used in the theater to mark the passage of time. This week we're exploring hourglasses by asking, did Shakespeare use an hourglass? <laughs> As I mentioned, hourglasses were used on ships, and originally they were water clocks, where there was water inside there, and the passage of water would mark how long it had been. Well, out on ship, the humidity uh, would create an unreliable use for this. It would, the humidity would build up inside the water clock, and it just wasn't, the moisture was a problem for sailors. And so they started using sand inside their hourglasses to mark the passage of time, and that didn't have the moisture problem. And they would actually use these to establish their latitude and longitude, distance from the shore, and hourglasses were very useful on board ship. But they would move on land and become a way to measure time. Now, what's interesting is the hourglass wasn't used to tell you what time of day it was. It was used more as a timer for when the hourglass, you, when you turn it up, the sand falls through the hourglass and the sand would fall at a certain rate. So the glass itself was capable of marking. Often it was one hour. It could also be a two hour hourglass, but you turn it up and it would, when the sand was gone, an hour had passed. So it wasn't used to tell you, oh, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. It was used to say, okay, if you need to fit something within a certain amount of time, this machine will measure that amount of time, which was useful for things like theater because you could turn it up and it was basically like a timer. You know, you've got to get your production done before all the sands run out of the hourglass. And so it could be used that way. It was also used inside classrooms. Teachers would often say, okay, I want you to write for an hour. And so they would turn it up and the students had to work for as long as the sand was still running. And if they got interrupted or they needed to pause, you just turn the hourglass sideways and then you could pause and then pick it back up and know that you had worked a complete hour. I was reading Tiffany Stern's article on hourglasses and timekeeping pieces in Shakespeare's lifetime, and I will link to that in the show notes for today's episode, but she also talked about how artists would use the hourglass, specifically one that is tangential to Shakespeare's life is Wenceslas Holler. He worked by the hour, so he would use an hourglass to time you know, how much of an hour to charge his customers. You know, if he worked a full hour or if he had to turn the hourglass three times, then it was three hours. And so artists would also use the hourglass to tell a customer, you know, how much they owed for a project based on an hourly rate. A fun fact from Tiffany Stern's article about the hourglass also includes a story about a preacher who preachers would give sermons by the hour. And there is a pulpit and hourglass illustration on the title page of the Bishop's Bible from 1569, which is the church's official authorized Bible. And what's funny though, is that, you know how you've seen hourglasses come in different shapes? Well, different shapes of an hourglass changes how long it takes for the sand to run through. And so they would give what's called a long hour hourglass or an hourglass that measured more than an hour to someone who was really good at giving a sermon. And then they would give what's called a short one to someone who they didn't want to speak very long. And so if it was, oh, they wanted to enjoy their story, he got a long hour hourglass. And if they didn't, he got a short hour hourglass. And that to me was really funny. The idea of a long hour and a short hour comes from this idea that a different shaped hourglass would measure a different amount of time. But for William Shakespeare's lifetime, it was all counted as one hour, whether it was a long one or a short one, it was still one. Because they didn't measure things in minutes, even though the, you had grains of sand, they didn't measure minutes and certainly not seconds in William Shakespeare's life. In several of his plays, like A Midsummer Night's Dream, you see places where Shakespeare refers to the concept of measuring minutes as something that was only for fairies to do. So they definitely didn't have the second hand and they didn't have micro minutes or, you know, half a second like we do today. It was just one hour was the way that they measured time. There are a couple of quotes from Shakespeare's plays that demonstrate 
hourglasses being used to mark how long it's been since something. For example, if they were measuring something, they might say it's two glasses past midday. That's a quote from Tiffany Stern's article. And she talks about how you could say, you know, three glasses since something or like in that comes from the tempest where you could measure time but for Shakespeare on stage he would use this dialogue this phrase of two, it's two glasses past midday you know he would use a phrase like that in his plays to help speed along the passage of time so it's because he's got to represent like in the case of Romeo and Juliet it's five days of information that happens over the course of a two-hour play so lines like that that employ a reference to an hourglass or how many glasses past the particular point of the day it is when a character appears on stage is a way of letting the audience know that time has passed it is the next day now and they use this in in the tempest they actually use the phrase you know three glasses since is a phrase from the Tempest. Interestingly, the concept of time flying with wings is actually from Shakespeare's life. There are illustrations and references in his plays as well as contemporary literature and contemporary art that show an hourglass with wings on it. And that is representing the idea of time flying by. You can see this echoed in Shakespeare's A Winter's Tale where he has Father Time appear on stage and the accoutrements he gives him is a set of wings. Father Time cause, calls for the use of his wings in Shakespeare's A Winter's Tale. So the hourglass was used in Shakespeare's lifetime for telling time, but not telling time in the sense of a clock. So we didn't, they didn't look at the hourglass and say, oh, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, but they might have said it's three glasses past midday, which would have been the same as three o'clock in the afternoon. So that's how the hourglass could be used to tell time throughout the day as well. If you were, you know, consistent about going over there and flipping it um, as soon as it, it ran out. So as you can see, the concept of time and, and doing things on time was, was really very fluid and there was a lot of room for error. But that is an introduction to the hourglass for William Shakespeare. That's it for this week. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I hope you learn something new about the Bard. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.